So you may think that this is just sort of a random um, adventure or some kind of random uh, new hobby that I have. But it's really not random and in fact it, it fits in with, with everything else that, that I'm trying to do and with an, an eventual goal in mind larger than just, just shaving. And one of the problems that I've had has been that the primitives that I'm using are just not powerful enough to express what I have uh, inside of me. I need the power of, of mastery of tools. And so what I'm working on is across many different uh, parts of my life in sort of establishing, well, pillars, pillars of mastery. I was having problems shaving with the disposable razors. I'm not sure exactly how I knew about uh, straight razors, I assume from a movie, but I was just getting tired of buying these disposable razors, having to clean out between the blades. It's just not clear how long you use them for. And then the other disposables, where you actually buy removable and replaceable heads, like the Mark III, those things are just so expensive, $10 for a package of five or something. And this is almost becomes on the order of a telephone bill, just your monthly shaving bill. And if you start to take the net present value of all of these payments, you're, you're talking thousands of dollars. I realized that I would probably be saving a fair amount by moving to a straight razor, saving a large amount of time, not throwing out as much, because with the disposables I just feel so guilty throwing out all of this plastic, using so much more of my quota of throwing out in garbage production. Yeah, more and more people are going back to that. It does give you the closer shave. Uh, the only drawback is that you're only allowed a few mistakes, or just one mistake. And I asked them, where can I buy a straight razor? We stopped selling. We weren't positive they were all being sold shaved with. And I said, oh, that's terrible. People are slitting their wrists with those razors. They said, no, no, that wasn't it at all. We thought some were being used as weapons. <laughs> so I thought that was kind of funny. It's modeled after the French army uh, straight razor that was they used during uh, World War II to shave the hair away from wounds. So this is used, eh? No, it's not. It's yeah. modeled after the ones. Oh. I'm learning from others. I'm, I'm studying John. And I know that there will come a point where I will have such a deep understanding of shaving that new things will become clear, new ways of approaching the problem. Then I will be able to innovate. A lot of people don't want to do it because they don't have the experience. And they can tell you other things, you know, but the truth is that. <laughs> So you think the older straight edge are just too difficult to keep sharp? Yeah, because they don't make good, good razors. Like a Tiger, German Solinger, people don't use it, so they don't make it. It's mm -hmm. buy for souvenirs. This is Wilkelson double eights. Really? You know, you use this here. It's a special razor. And if I cut you, I won't cut you too much. Bleed yeah. Way down, you know, because it's just a little bit here, you know. Okay. Try it myself. I'm just watching how he holds the blade in the direction that he cuts in. His blade is different than ours. He's using a Wilkinson disposable blade. He just uh, inserts into the body and a new one for every customer. And we have an older style uh, solid blade. John actually isn't very hot on these kinds of blades. He thinks that the metal quality is uh, frequently inferior. Ah, that's what that groove is for. That's for the, uh, for the pinky. Okay, so he, he holds it like this. So now I have both the sensation and the knowledge uh, of how he was actually doing it. This refines the, the edge, aligns the edge, right? It doesn't establish the edge. It just brings the molecules into alignment for a straight edge. Never touch the hone in a backward stroke when putting it in position for the second movement. Huh. Extra high speed, non-filling, razor gripping one side. That's a sentence. All caps. The world's finest mellow hone on the other side. A straight edge should last someone a lifetime. This blade I've had for about a month. This is the first time I've honed it. I hope this is doing something. Let's see how this edge is taking. It's feeling good, much sharper than it was before. Just running my fingers along the edge. Before it just didn't have a catch to it really. It's so sharp that when I put my two fingers together on it, I can't feel where the blade ends. Just in a nutshell, is your four basic grades of badger hair. 
is what they call pure badger, super badger, best badger, and high mountain badger. Okay. Color variation is, is depending upon how far the badger has to ferret for food. The high mountain is the most luxurious, it's the softest, it's the densest. The badger had a good life. I think this is uh, artificial. As we can tell there's not much of a difference uh, in color from the bottom to the top. <laughs> not very expensive at all. Let's see, this bite trumper is $35. I think the refills are 20 Two, three swipes over the soap, lather up your face, rinse it out with cold water. Let's give it a final polish on the strop just before I, before I dig in here. See, one is uh, basically the, the sideburns, and uh, two is the cheek, and then we'll do the sideburns and the cheek on the other side as well. She feels very nice. This is tough. The hairs there are just very resilient and tough, you know? And just shaving in this direction, I keep feeling the blade cut into my neck and, and grab it and I just, you know, have to stop. Try to look at that, how beautiful that is, how closely shaven that is. Can you see that? That's, that, uh, I was on a roll there. Oh, you got some blood, a little bit of blood there. Oh shit, I'm bleeding all over. Check it out, dude. If I actually get good at it, well, which I will, um, every second day, if I, if I went in too clean shaven, they would start to wonder if I could really program. I almost got to do this way I feel because my hand's in the way I can't see. I want to be careful here, I have a mole right here that I always cut off when I'm shaving. Well, it used to be much larger than it is now. <laughs> it took a f fairly long time, but hopefully I'll be able to make it uh, a faster process as I begin to master the skill. Right now I'm, I'm, a, an, I'm an amateur, and I need to continue going to the guys. I mean, I can't go to La Flamme uh, uh, too frequently because it costs me 15 bucks a pop, right? So I, uh, I can only go there for, as a special treat every once in a while to learn. Mastery is when you turn the tables, right? Mastery is when you go on and innovate and do things that no one else has done before. And I really see that as being possible with shaving.